Samwise. A lot of people seem as the original hero of Lord of the Rings, and I completely agree. I like Frodo as a character, but Samwise is just that helpful companion that is loyal till the end, which is a very admirable and likable trait. Even when Frodo tells Samwell to go back home, Samwell comes back and still continues on the journey. Lord of the Rings was admitted to have a lot of Christian symbolism by Tolkien himself, and one of my favorite scenes from the movies are... Samwell just simply carrying Frodo on his back. You know, it, it represents that you shouldn't bear sin by yourself. You need people to help you along the way. I'm not exactly a religious person myself, but it still impacted me. They could have easily just made this the fat comedic relief character, but they actually gave him a personality. And I like that we see Samwell's journey from beginning to end. He's the one that concludes a trilogy. Samwell is my favorite Lord of the Rings character and one of my favorite characters of all time. Ripley. There's a problem with current Hollywood and their female character creations. It seems that Hollywood is creating these female characters to show how progressive they are as opposed to creating good characters. I'm not saying they're all like that, but that's what I've been seeing so far. There's like this, uh, this snubness that comes from the people who create these token female characters. Like, there haven't been good female characters before, so they have to take it in their own hands to create these female characters. Which is completely false, because some of Hollywood's most iconic characters are female. Sarah Connor, Princess Leia, and of course, Eleanor Ripley. What separates the Eleanor Ripleys and the Captain Marvels is that Eleanor Ripley shows that she's vulnerable sometimes. She doesn't have to act super tough like she's invincible and stuff because no one relates to that. Nobody's perfect. Ripley has displayed through the first two movies that she's terrified, she's anxious, but at the end of the day she overcomes it and becomes stronger. She's a very relatable character and that's what makes her super likable. In the first Alien movie, we see that Eleanor Ripley is terrified of the Xenomorphs and is able to defeat it by outsmarting it. And in Aliens, we see that she's still terrified of the Xenomorphs. But despite her fears, she goes back into a nest filled with multiple Xenomorphs in order to save the little girl Newt. And that's what makes her heroic. She's scared out of her mind, but at the same time, she's still willing to sacrifice her life for others. And that's why Eleanor is one of my favorite characters of all time. Django. There's nothing really deep or complex about Django, but he doesn't need to be. Django Unchained as a whole is very straightforward. It's not really a complex movie. It doesn't have some sort of grand moral that makes you think right after the movie. It's simple storytelling, but it's the way it's portrayed. This movie has style, just like Django the character. It's all about execution here. Django is funny, charismatic, and... One of my favorite things about him is his character design. He just looks like a badass. But what I like about the character the most is how determined he is. I see a lot of parallels between him and Beatrix Kiddo. Like, nothing will stop them from achieving their goals. Again, I think Jango is also a very funny character. Not the funniest, I would give that award to Samuel L. Jackson's character. But he still has really funny lines. The way Jango progresses and develops throughout the story is also super fun to watch. He's just a very enjoyable badass character, and not to mention he has one of the best movie themes I've ever heard. Antonius Block. The Seven Seal is a very interesting movie, and it's the first film I've seen that's brought up religious disbelief. You know, when movies talk about religion, it's usually about how bad it is or how great it is, but I don't ever recall watching a movie that referenced religion and involved faith in some way. It was more about how religion can be good, how religion can be bad, but not about how people feel about religion, or simply what they believe. In The Seventh Seal, Antonius Block is encountered by death and he is told that it is his time to die. I think this is a great setup because we don't really know for sure if death in the movie is real. To Antonius, he could just be a visual representation of what dying is like. We see Antonius' journey throughout the movie where he experiences the world and tries to gather from those events whether God is real or not. I relate to this so much because... I don't know if God's real or not. I'm not denying it. I'm not saying he's real for sure, but, you know, I'm open to the concept of religion. Antonius is also a knight, so at the same time, he's very noble. Um, he's well put together, just some very likable traits. And it kind of connects with the whole religious debate, because while he seems well put together, at the same time, he's struggling internally. Antonius really stands out as a character for me. <laughs> Sam Lari. Again, another very relatable character, but instead of the character focusing more on what happens after life, it focuses more on what's happening currently in life. Sam seems like an average Joe. He has a 9-to-5 job, he works well enough, 
but we are then introduced to his imaginations. I will admit, when my life seems boring at one point, I will just start daydreaming. And that's what Sam does. He starts daydreaming when he just wants to escape life for a moment. Sam is also relatable to me in the sense that he's very hesitant to embrace change. I also kind of fear the unknown, a difference in my life. Even if it might be beneficial towards me, I still would rather prefer to stay in my usual position. And that's what Sam is like at first. You know, he's offered a job opportunity, he rejects it, and then he battles his own fear and goes ahead and takes it. It kind of teaches you that change is inevitable and you might as well just take it on. Also, if you haven't seen the movie Brazil, you should. Alex. This was a very fun, evil protagonist. In the beginning of A Clockwork Orange, Alex is just a horrible, despicable person. We get a central idea of what kind of character he is. He beats and rapes people. He can be charming when he wants to, seeing how he's able to bring two girls back home with him. And he has no remorse for others. But once he gets arrested and goes through the prison reform system, he gets thrown back into the same world where now he's the victim. Kind of showing no matter how much he changes, he can't escape pain. And Stanley Kubrick was able to display that in its full extent. Despite how evil and despicable Alex is, he does have admirable traits. He's very cunning, very intelligent. He's also very intimidating, despite the character being a teenager. And I think that's what makes Alex kind of interesting, is that a teenager would have the capabilities to be this intelligent, be this cunning, but also very evil at the same time. You know, it's kind of a chilling feeling to know that a teenager would go out and rape people or kill them and have no remorse for how they feel. Alex also has a pretty cool character design, which is always a plus. He's one of my favorite characters from one of my favorite movies. Frollo. The original might slightly be better written, and a lot of people might prefer the original Judge Claude Frollo, who wasn't actually a judge. But you know, I, I like this interpretation too. He's a cunning, maniacal villain. The one you love to hate, but at the same time can't help but like him. Uh, during a time when Disney villains were evil just for the sake of it, Frollo was more complex than that. Which seems to be what Disney's trying to do now with their newer villains, trying to make him more complex and gray, but... The way they go about it is pretty lazy. All of the new Disney villains are twist villains, meaning they appear to be the hero but suddenly become evil and that's supposed to create some sort of gray area in their character. It just seems like lazy writing to me. Reason number one, the twist doesn't work because it's fucking obvious. And the second reason, the villains aren't as interesting. Their motives are half-assed because the twist is half-assed. Frollo sees himself as a righteous man, but at the same time he's very corrupt. He's someone who denies his own faults. That's an interesting character. That's a great character setup. And the execution is also wonderful. And Tony J just knocked it out of the fucking park. He has one of the coolest voices ever, and it was a great idea to have him be the voice of this villain. The Hunchback of Notre Dame is my favorite Disney movie of all time. And Claude Frollo is my favorite character from the Disney franchise. Atticus Finch. I won't spend too long talking about why I like this character, because I pretty much like him for all the same reasons other people like him. He's just an incredible role model. He stands up to justice, he's very courageous, and at the same time, just like Eleanor Ripley, we see that he's still human, he's still very fearful. And that's what makes him great, because despite having that fear, he still doesn't back down to anyone. He also reminds me a lot of my favorite president, Theodore Roosevelt, who was, ironically, not the greatest advocate for civil rights, but they're similar in the sense that they have the same mannerisms. On the outside, they appear nerdy, but on the inside, they're really badasses. Joker. Again, I don't want to spend too much time on this one because I feel like I like him for all the same reasons everyone else likes him. I mean, Heath Ledger's acting is in another category. I could just make a video talking about that, and his character is in another as well, and it's incredible. I grew up with the uh, Mark Hamill Joker, and I also grew up with the uh, Batman 19, I think it was 89 movie. I believe that's the year it came out with uh, Jack Nicholson. So I, I always kind of saw him as some sort of clown mob boss. That's what he was to me. He wasn't deep or complex or anything really, but he was incredibly enjoyable. I love Mark Hamill's voice as a Joker, it's fucking amazing. But Christopher Nolan does a lot more with this Joker interpretation because the character is still enjoyable and it challenges societal ideas. The movie came out in 2008 and people still talk about the Joker and what he believes in. So what he stands for still has an impact on the outside world. He likes to play with people's fears, which is also a very scary and dangerous trait about a character, but at the same time you can't help but admire it. Great villain, I mean, he was also just a very uh, enjoyable character as well. That's something I feel like current Joker interpretations miss. They don't make him funny. I like that this Joker is very intense and he's supposed to be scary, but at the same time he can make you laugh. Like, it's a kind of an awkward chuckle. And that's what I really like about the character. And unfortunately, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker interpretation, while it was amazing in terms of acting, I don't think it really 
showed what the Joker is really like. There was only one scene where Joaquin Phoenix was being scary and intense and at the same time being funny. And I wish we just got more of that. But the Heath Ledger Joker delivers everything I would want in the Joker character and then some. Hans. Yeah, my favorite character is a Nazi, so I think that makes me a bigot. Oh well. Hans is the little finger of Inglorious Bastards. He controls every situation he's in, until they meet their untimely demise at the end. I don't know what it is about intelligent characters, they just, I don't know, are very easy to like, I guess. But he's also like a dighead, you know? He's just a very smart guy, but he likes to trick people and manipulate them and just have fun with people who are less intelligent than he is. I don't know if that makes me a sick bastard for enjoying watching scenes like that, but... I don't know, those are some of my favorite scenes from him. Spoilers up ahead, uh, Hans was hired by the United States government to basically manipulate people, but what is great about him is that he likes doing it. He's a true strategist. He likes what he's doing and he's great at it. And the reason why he didn't get everything he wanted at the end is because he got a little too cocky. Some people don't like the ending of Inglourious Bastards, but I personally do because it displayed that Hans isn't perfect, he has his own character flaws. He may be incredibly smart, but his ego gets the best of him. He also has a really cool design. Say what you will about the Nazis, but they had some pretty sharp uniforms. Inglourious Bastards is one of my favorite movies of all time. While it's not my favorite, Hans is my favorite cinematic character of all time.